All right. Um, so yeah, so I'm just, I was trying to get a demo going too, and I got sidetracked with a call on Jamf before this thing got started <laughs> and it didn't get done in time and I'm having problems with my live demo, but I've got a little video I can show that's part of the uh, video that I just posted and I'm queued up to the right spot. And we can at least look at that. I will get my screen share going here if I can figure out where the green button went. Oh, there it is still in the same place. Um, so I've been using uh, Jamf Cloud and the Jamf integration with uh, Azure AD for quite a while, for since 2018. So we were early adopters. It was, it's had periods of being relatively stable and periods of being not very stable at all. <laughs> And I don't know what this thing is doing. File mode is turned off. Let me try and get this going because then we can do the demo by the time I'm done docking. And I cannot type my password and talk at the same time for some reason. Okay, that's on. Turn on file vault. Create recovery key, do not use. Continue, continue. Okay, we'll see if we can get that going. At any rate. Um, so in Jamf, uh, there is uh, there's a connector, and you get to do a little bit of setup in the background. And that part, while difficult, it is well documented. If you do that part and get it set up and working, you rarely ever have to look at that part again. Um, and one of the Jamf guys, Bryce Carlson, has created this website here that's uh, macbuddy.info. And it's a let's get conditional bunch of series on how the whole thing works. And he starts with getting the enterprise application set up and he goes through how everything works in pretty good detail. So if you want detail on how it's working, why it's working, this is a great series of things to go look at. Um, Those also, are some great names. Unconditional love. <laughs> Unconditional love part two. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, if you get into Slack, there's a Jamf Intune integration. I think that's what it's called, Jamf, Jamf Intune integration. So if you're going to get into there, you can ask questions there. Bryce answers when he can. He's working 10, 15 hour days, 16 hour days sometimes, and on the phone all day long trying to get logs from people to send over to Microsoft and fix issues. Um, so he's part of the team that works that's working on the new Microsoft SSO plugin as well uh, and why that doesn't work or does work and uh, company portal which is a part of all of that he explains how all that works in here uh, but essentially if we go oops where did my it's on this tab here I did a talk called the good the bad and the ugly uh, for Intune at Jamf Nation like they were saying earlier and Chris was saying and if you sign into company portal and get your password during, and so I have my setup process, you know, kind of like uh, whatever it is that Jamf people use the notifier. I script the Jamf enrollment registration stuff here. And so it kicks it off. You, you have to sign in. The cool part is with the app SSO or the Microsoft SSO plugin. Now you don't actually have to do this sign in step here to Jamf AAD. It just goes and picks up the uh, credentials you used for uh, logging into company portal. You do have to say that it gets always allow access though to the keychain item. So you do have to type that, but it goes through. And then once you get conditional access, then it allows us to get into VPN so that we can um, VPN into work. And then I'm also showing here that once you get the conditional access, I can sign into the Microsoft My Apps page and um, get access to applications while I'm not on VPN yet because the machine is now a trusted device. So that's kind of what's going on showing you here. Uh, the really nice part when you do get it all working, it's asking for access to the Microsoft organization certificate and if as long as you tell it always apply. So when you get the Microsoft SSO plugin and get it working, it kind of takes away some of those prompts and you get way fewer prompts even during the initial setup, which is really nice. Um, 
we'll show you. So anyway, you guys can watch that. There's no, not very exciting to watch that. Um, the big keys to knowing about this, if you log into Microsoft or to endpoint.microsoft.com, you get into devices, you can see an overview of devices and you know, this might freak some of you out. It only shows that I have one Mac OS device. And that was somebody who actually tried to open company portal and sign in through company portal, but they, it doesn't work that way in our environment. They get there and it, they never get a trusted device uh, because the Jamf registration doesn't actually ever show up under the Intune enrolled devices. So we do have uh, lots of devices. We've got 1,383 of them that are in there. This guy's not compliant because we're, uh, he's 10.15.6 and we have a minimum OS set to 10.15.7. So that's some of the really neat things that you can do for compliance policies. Um, you can come in and look at the properties and you can, you can set a minimum OS version. Yes, I have maximum set to 10.15.8, which doesn't really exist, but uh, it didn't like it with 10.15.7 as the minimum and the maximum, but you can also set build versions as well. So if you want to have 19H524 as your minimum because it fixes the pseudo bug, you can set that to the minimum and the people that ignore you about updating their uh, computer don't have any free disk space, so you can't force the update to happen. Those people will call in and they will get their things fixed when they can't get on email and they can't get on VPN and they can do nothing because their device isn't trusted anymore. So it's kind of a nice way to actually get people to install updates and stuff like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we don't set a whole lot in here. We require the device to be encrypted. We you know, require a minimum maximum OS. So if anybody upgrades to Big Sur, they cannot connect because our security tools SCP and DLP from Symantec Broadcom don't work at the moment. So we're kind of on hold with that. And we're still stuck on Catalina. Um, and, you know, we, and we have firewall must be on with stealth mode turned on. But um, th those are the four basic things that we require for our Macs to be compliant from the Intune view. Of course, when you get into Jamf, you get a, you know, you can say this piece of software needs to be installed and have smart groups to check for it. And if somebody un uninstalls it, you can reinstall it uh, and so forth. So something is going on with this whole thing and it's not installing all the right profiles yet. So it's not gonna do good for us for this live demo. Uh, so, you know, if we go back to my little, Chrome window. Here's a Chrome window that'll fit on the screen. You know, like I said, go into my 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 apps.microsoft.com. I'm logged in when I'm on uh, VPN. We also have uh, the Kerberos thing signed in, so we'll we'll have a Kerberos ticket in the background in theory, assuming that that thing's working half the time. The the, and I'll show you, oops, come down here. It's too big to fit on this window. There we go. So even though the Kerberos SSO thing says I'm signed in and my password expires in 37 days, well, it let the Kerberos ticket expire and it didn't renew it. So you can either renew that with knit or And then you get a ticket. And then when you go to log in with your web browser to something, you know, that requires single sign-on, it'll just do it without having to type any usernames or passwords. So it's pretty slick. And when it's all working right and during setup, you know, you have to type a password in like in that video for the first initial, uh, sign in to company portal but after that when you launch outlook outlook automatically if you've got the right key set in the office preference file it'll automatically put your name in there it'll automatically use that username to and already existing sign in to uh, activate office it'll go out and figure out what your account is and sign you in and get you know you have to click a couple times OneDrive, when you do initial OneDrive setup, it has you have to type your username in there because it doesn't use the key yet. 
but it'll go use your already signed in authentication with the Microsoft SSO um, authentication. Teams, actually the newest version of Teams, when you launch it, it figures out who you are and sets it up and signs you in without doing anything now. Uh, so it uh, it's pretty nice when it does it. This video here, I think it mostly worked. <laughs> and then I found, so one of the things with the Jamf uh, integration is they've recently come out with a retry logic profile that you can push out, which is supposed to try and have the retry logic happen in the background more silently. Well, there's some bugs with MSAL and with the Jamf AAD app, and it winds up unregistering your account more often than it doesn't. And you have to be very careful about not pushing that profile out before you're actually registered because if you push the profile out it causes a race condition and then jamf aad won't register which is what happened in this um, but so here's my setup it asks you to enroll in intune and it took me forever to click okay for some reason and you sign in the new company portal and so once i would do this if everything worked it would, uh, I was trying to figure out if I had the profile, the SSO profile, because the last time I had done Intune enrollment, it actually just did it without me signing in with the SSO app. But Microsoft's been having lots of problems with the SSO app. The current 10 or 11.3 beta two was completely broken with the Microsoft single sign on thing. And I hear the dot three or the beta three for that is better and i'm going to try and get that tested this week but you sign in here typically and then <laughs> it never did it never did anything for the jamf aad part after i clicked done here and the reason was because i had the profile pushed to this computer instead of waiting for it to get enrolled first and so that the whole Jamf AAD part just crashed after this and it wasn't actually doing the registration. So nothing worked from that point forward. But um, it, it can be, you know, completely and totally convenient for actual real single sign on when you're using it. And basically I'll let you guys just ask questions at this point. I can poke through the console and show you a little bit of stuff on the console if you want to. There, the users in Microsoft, when you look at a user, let's go look at me. Oops, yes. If you, when you look at devices here, it can show you all your devices that are in Azure. Whereas when you look at the devices tab in Endpoint Manager, that shows you actual Intune devices and not what's in Azure. So they're two different things. 